Hey guys <coughs> and gals and the particular little gal Savannah Walters on uh, Bayou Golf's website uh, which is Steve's Walters daughter she's 10 years old she's a southern belle beautiful little girl and she was explaining the protocols of channel lock on Steve Walters website uh, channel today 10 year old girl beautiful little lady and Savannah if you watch this uh, you know as much about channel lock as we do darling that was a great little explanation and I couldn't critique any of it um, unjustly I thought it would you, you had a great understanding darling so you've um, you've got a good student there Steve okay guys just bits bits that really make a difference my, my striking in the last week has been the best I've ever had in my life it's almost to the pinnacle now where I think well JH if, you, if you're going to improve it anymore you're going to really be asking it maybe a, a little bit too much and a bridge too far I'll never be a world-class ball striker but the ball striking that I've had in the last week has been incredibly consistent uh, um, amazingly accurate and just great ball flight and guys so I'll just give you the benefit of what I'm actually doing now what I'm doing with my protocols the thought processes that I have now I say to a lot of people all the time ad nauseum that it is absolutely of no good to you if you start hitting the ball and you hit it great and you say that feels great and you hit it great if you don't know what creates the feel because you'll never be able to reproduce it and that is the social players um, life style in, in in their player in their player the club player they've got it for a couple of holes they've got it on the practice fairway first nine back nine gone next day gone comes back it's because guys you have to isolate what when you're doing something right what is creating that rightness in the golf swing now in my protocol now I've just got a few things that I've got locked down absolutely now and I can't forget them and they're very easy to remember and to bring forward every time so I'll go through them with you now what is automatic for me guys is, is really is the measuring out here that's just automatic and the bringing the foot up here into play is, is automatic the balance is automatic but what I really need to have automatic in my channel lock swing all the time is the bias of loading into the trail axis this is a trail axis golf swing guys don't let anybody tell you any, anything else you can load forward if you like but it's not designed to work that way it's designed to work off the trail axis so it's easier to get to the ball off the trail foot if you load forward you're going to have a lot of torque and a lot of mass moving in the wrong direction rotationally in the backswing if you load left at address you can get away with it and some people will do that and I've hit the ball and I can do that but it's nowhere near as effective or efficient for me as loading into the trail axis so for me guys it's this it's trail axis and to use the phrase that I coined probably 12 years ago when I first started on, on YouTube we had the flamingo stance a couple of guys are using that term now but I think I was the guy that that actually came up with it Fling flamingo is basically feeling you're on the on the trail leg on one leg and you're just swinging your arms past a quiet body and that's all it is guys I try and get my arms to swing past a quiet body with the body not doing very much this is old ground but I want to reinforce reinforce and I think I've got that to the extent now where it's second nature for me so I come in here I set up I get my measurement here get the club in this position here bring that that lead foot up for balance but I'm basically sitting in here now I saw Bill Phillips the other day saying that uh, for a lot of people don't go over cocking the shoulders don't go getting around here as he demonstrates you don't go getting around in here you don't need to do that well you've got to understand why that happens with me why I do that it's because guys I'm pre-turning I'm getting into my backswing now 
what, where I am here is just where I'm going to be in part of the backswing and part of the downswing. I could be here. That wouldn't be too much because that's where I'm going to be at the top of the golf swing. So wherever I am there, whatever that angulation is or that orientation, it's not too much for me. It might feel too much for some people and they may feel when they set up here, and this is the explanation, this is what I wanted, I should have sent, sent uh, Tinker Bill a, a, an email and I completely forgot. But what people will feel here, if they, if they get in that orientation there, is that they will hit it straight right. But bear in mind guys, even if you start from here, you're going to be there in the course of the backswing, look. You're going to be there anyway and you're going to be there. So why not preset it? For me, that's what I do. That's the reason I preset it. And I should have, I should have explained that, Tinker. Uh, I, I forgot to. But I can understand a lot of people saying that if they get in here and they back cock too much, they feel like they're going to hit it straight right. And you will feel that, but you have to understand that th that is only a proportional part of the shoulder rotation in the golf swing that's going to happen anyway. You can't take the golf club back without going through that range of motion. I should have explained that tinker. Okay, so I come in here. For me, I, I back cock a little bit. I set into that trail foot. I unload the, the lead foot. And guys, it's pressure down. I pressure down. Pressure down. I pressure down, try and get as much turn as I can get here. Pressure down, pressure down. I've still got pressure down. Now, to start the downswing, guys, I'm pressuring down with my trail hand. Not only am I pressuring down, I'm precursoring the hit factor. Because I have a lot of hit in my golf swing. There's no swing in my golf swing. I'm a hitter. And I, and I want to get from here to the top, pressure down and fire that trail hand as hard as I can. And I fire it really early. I try and turn it down from the top of the swing. And Jimmy DeMera told my great Australian friend, who was also a friend of Hogan's and played with Hogan, great Australian player Norman Von Eide. Jimmy Namira told Norman Von Eide that Hogan, in his mind, it, it, and he said even Hogan actually said to him, from the top of the swing, Hogan did that. From the very top of the swing, Hogan tried to get the club closing from the top of the swing. Now you never hear that mentioned, but Demera told Norman Von Eide that, and Norman Von Eide told me. And of course, you can understand that because Hogan said that he rolled the club face open so much at the top of the swing, it was open so much by cupping that wrist that he could, he could actually re-rotate it as hard as he liked and never get it closed because it was so open. So if he knew that, why wouldn't he get the hit going early in the, in the, in the downswing? He already had the, the lower half activating, so why wouldn't he get that trail hand going? I believe it's a, it's a single big failing in the club player's armoury guys in, in that they don't hit early enough with the trail hand they just don't get it going early enough okay you can't get the club to the top of the swing as a trail a club player and then just fire it like that because you'll you hit it over here you've got to have a good lower body sequencing and lead on that trail hand but guys I get it going as hard as I can and as early as I can from the top of the golf swing I promise you I feel like I want to turn it into the ground there and if I don't do that, I don't strike the ball as well as I can. So, it's not hitting from the top. Well, it is. It's an intention to hit from the top. Tom Watson said that he did it. Tom Watson said, I do that from the top of the swing. Jack Nicklaus said, I do that from the top of the swing. Harry Varden said, I do that from the top of the swing. They didn't do that. They didn't look like that. They were here. But they felt like that because they had exemplary lower body start. And you've got to have that feeling to get it going, guys, because the club head is travelling so fast. If you don't get it going quick enough and early enough, and I believe that the majority of great ball strikers and, and tour players do that anyway, and that's why they hit the ball the way they do, straight or with a draw or whatever, or just get good ball flight, and the club player doesn't. The club player invariably hits the ball if he's a right-hander, hits it to the right. Because he's got the club face open. Why is the club face open? Because he's not closing it. He's not closing it early enough. It's just not rotating it early enough. So I get it going very early. And so that's in my in my my process now. So again, I pressure down, pressure down, fire, fire, fire. And, and as I come in, guys, 
I just roll that that lead forearm in that direction thumb down out there as hard as I can and I hit into out but I hit it hard I don't air depend it I may look like I'm not giving it a hit but I'm trying to hit the ball as hard and that's my objective the golf ball not the target I'm trying to put this on that golf ball that's the only thing I can control so that's what I do so so let's go over that again when I get in here I've got in here got in position here back cocked push pressure down pressure down pressure down pressure down turn down turn down turn down turn down and I just try and keep my legs and my body out of it oh, guys it's 180,000 degrees here today it's a wonder I'm just not uh, I'm not a grease spot we get no respite from the heat here it's just unbelievable So I feel those things now guys, I feel that. I feel that turn down early. I feel a quiet body. I feel everything going down this trail axis. Down that trail axis. Down that trail axis. I don't feel that. I feel the club going there. Into or out. I feel the club face going there. Towards the target. Clubs going into or out. Club face towards the target. And guys if you get that, that turning down very early in the back downswing You'll, you'll find it easy to square the club face up towards the target and have it a little bit closed for that across the target line attack on the ball. If you've got a 7, 8, 9 degrees into out and you can have the club face closed 3, 4 degrees or something like that, you'll get that little draw. Okay, now someone asked me about, about how, how do I load it in the backswing. When I'm pressuring down, guys, I'm pressuring down, but I'm pulling this back. Guys, I'm, I'm pulling the hands ahead of the club head. I don't take my backswing back like that. I don't take the club head back first. I take my hands back first. I pressure down with my hands and the club head trails. And someone asked about the yogi loading. How do you, how do you load it? Well, I just think pressure down hands first. Hands. Hands and, and the club head trails. It would be like It'd be like this, guys. If you had, if I had the club, I'm a long way away here. If I had the club in behind the, say this is a brick wall here, and I had the club there, and the club couldn't move, and I pulled my hands, that feeling. That's what I used to do with students. I would get them to set up, like even with a conventional swing, and then I put my foot on the club head, and I'd say, take your hands back, and they go like that, and the club head would stay there, and they'd feel this pull on the club head. They say, I say, what do you feel? I say, I'm trying to pull the club out from underneath your foot. And guys, that's what you've got to do to get momentum loading. You've got to have an imaginary foot there holding that club head there. You don't want to cock that club back into position here like that. You want to leave it there. You want to leave it there and pull the hands back. That, that's how I get that momentum loading. Because you get negative and then it'll go into positive. The pressure down creates a negative loading. That, that's what creates the negative loading. So for the person that asked about that, that's how we get the negative loading. We feel like the club is just completely, uh, completely isolated there and we just pull the hands back. And the good thing about that guys is that immediately gets the hands into the channel beside the body. All right, now, because I've got my protocol down perfect, I'll just hit a shot. First shot of the day, dead cold. Now guys, first shot of the day, look at that. Wow. I aimed it at that that 160 sign out there and it's just landed right at the base the base of the uh, of the post that it's on it landed right at the base it might have even hit the base okay, don't aim at the post but I was aiming at the sign but see how quiet the body was there guys the body is quiet the weight's in that trial leg 
pressure down. Look how quiet the body is. Oh, hit the sign. Hit the sign. And when, I, when I'm early on in the day, uh, in the practice sessions, I try and keep the foot down. I just try and keep it down. That makes me have a very quiet body. Hit the sign. Come on, baby. Listen to this, guys. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, hear that? <clears throat> I don't do that all the time, but that's... That's three shots, and one was a metre to the right. One was right on the base, and that one just, just landed at the base and kicked into the sign. Now, when I'm aiming, I, I give myself five or six yards either side of that sign. If that's the flag in the middle of the green, and I promise you guys, I, I never get in that six yards left. It's always in the six yards to the right. Uh, that's usually, I just don't get the... I've got a little bit of right to left wind and I can't hold the ball up into the wind enough that it might just go over there. Or I might just draw it over there. But I never get it going left. So, there it is guys. I come in here. Measure off, measure off. Load the trail side. Pressure down. Pressure down. Hear that? <laughs> oh. One hop into the sign. You can hear that. It's a pretty big bang. A six iron here, guys. That sign's um, 100 and, uh, from here. It's um, about 150 metres, so about 162 yards. But I'm only hitting, only hitting um, soft shots. Nothing in that, in that shot hard at all. It's just, just a warm-up. So that's what I try and do, and 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 the, the the protocol now is so ingrained. It's so ingrained now that it is an automatic pilot. It just manifests itself by itself, for itself. And why is the swing the same every day? Because I can remember the protocol, and I go through the protocol before I start hitting. I can just feel it every time. exactly the same flight every time and the thing I like about channel lock is that there's no big variation in flight no, no big dispersion factor it's a very very narrow channel that, that we that we hit the ball into You can hear that contact, guys. Now I'm very stiff, very stiff. Even though it's hot, I'm an old dude, and it takes a while for the the old bones to um, to get the muscles working. But but this here, guys, is is definite. I mean, that is just an absolute hammer down. Okay, I'll have to try a little bit longer swing. I, I mean, it's really just super contact. I'm not a digger. Channel lock is a very shallow golf swing. 
that's the advantage of it. You can hit off, off tight lies, it doesn't really matter. And you just you just won't dig. You won't dig shots at all. Push down. Okay, what else? Is there anything else? Well, I'll hit some three woods, and this is the uh, guys. We've got 24-hour security guards on this. Everybody that hits it wants it. They're all trying to steal it, throwing blank checks down. Saying, "I say, go and make your own. You can't get this head. This is a tour issue head, and." Uh, it's a very, very special head. It's an old slider tour issue, high launch, three, three wood. Very rare. Uh, this shaft is, and guys, this is six iron length, three wood. Everything's the same. You watch this. Exactly the same golf swing. Pressure down, pressure down. Exactly the same golf swing. Yeah, just a little smooth. Now they're all, they're all probably 12 yard circle, most of them are like 5 yards, but they wouldn't be outside a 12 yard circle, at all, not at all. Okay, the foot comes up a little bit because I've got a little bit more zip going in this. I'll smooth this out. For guys, for anybody that's having trouble keeping their the shoulders closed. The easiest way, guys, is to keep your lead knee bent. Keep your lead knee bent, keeps the forward, the thigh forward, keeps the lead hip closed, keeps the torso closed, keeps the lead shoulder closed. That's the, that's that's probably the easiest way to keep it closed. Now they're pretty brisk swings, they're not, they're not really nice tempo because I'm very tight today. But that's the good thing about channel lock. Doesn't matter whether you're tight or whatever, you're not going to have a great change in your mechanics. Tempo will just be up. Okay, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Yeah, it's a great little club. Everybody wants to steal it. Because you can hit any shot you want to hit with it, you know, like little little leaks, little little uppers, little downers. It's just a great club. Okay, last shot. This is a protocol in here. Measure, measure, measure. On the trail side. Pressure down. And killer time. Okay guys, that was, that was just, just a few things today. Um,
to get the feeling of that uh, keeping the lead hip close and again this is something we've been the road we've been down many times before just get a wedge or a nine iron or whatever just grip it down just hit a few of these shots guys keep the lead knee bent lead knee bent sit into it see if that lead knee is bent that's inside it the hips are closed uh, just hit some shots like that guys I'm only hitting those like 100, 100 yards stay on that trail thing pressure down Oh, that's going to be 120 hours. But having that feeling of the uh, of the lead knee bent and supporting the uh, the lead hip, that's what you've got to cultivate in the big swing. See that guys, that's how you want to finish. Hit a feel like that. Just hit a feel like that. Just feel that your legs are bent. I'm really hitting that, really getting that club face to close down from the top of the swing. They're all in, they're all in a five yard circle, those. Uh, there's a patch out there, a bare patch, and it's about three yards wide. At about one, about 120, so we're going to land it right in it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Well, you can't see, guys, I can tell you anything. But I'm a former Boy Scout, and Boy Scouts don't tell the the porky pies, the lies, that was in that little, probably three yard bear patch, right on the number. Now I do this on occasions that, to get my, my leg action going correctly. Yeah, just hit a bunch of these. I do them all the time. See, that's crazy. That's... That's gone about 135. And I'm just trying to hit that soft. Okay, it's just... It's a 9-iron, but I'm just trying to hit that soft. Like, just trying to hit little 120s up there. Um, but that's gone about 135 because I really did just time that beautifully. What do I hit 9 on normally? Yeah, about 135. 135 metres. 143 yards. I can hit it further than that, but I don't try and hit it any further than that. That's right, that's landed right, <laughs> uh, it's landed right in the middle of that pad. Guys, the, the good thing with, 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 with short shots is you never get lefts with channel lock. You just don't get lefts. I mean, I can have water over there and I could have a bet going for a million dollars. I ain't going to hit it in the water. If I had my own money, if I had a lot of money, would I bet a million bucks I wouldn't hit in the water? Yeah, I would. I would. 
because I know I wouldn't hit in the water. I would. Maybe not if I only had a million, that might be a bit too much pressure, but if I had 20 million, I'd put up a million? Yeah, I would. Absolutely. And uh, guys, I really mean it. If I had 20 million, I'd put up a million. I'd bet someone they could put water right down on a flag, you know, 10 or 12, 15 feet or 15 yards from the water, and I ain't going in the water. And I wouldn't hit a bailout, I wouldn't hit it 40 feet right. I'd hit it within, you know, 25 foot corridor or 25 meter corridor, 25 feet corridor. Come, last shot. Right on top of the other balls. Yeah, so guys, my, my, my channel lock is fantastic at the moment. I don't have... Um... And you know what I did today? I've got a favourite driver. It's a, that, that Callaway Diablo of mine, and it's got a very, very special shaft in it. It's a very, very special head. I cut it down today to 41 inches. <laughs> I've glued the grip on, and the grip... It's very hot, and the grip's still wet, so I can't... Um... The grip's moving, but... Guys, that's how much confidence I've got that the short clubs is the way to go. This is my PRGR, 41 inch. You watch, there's no difference in the golf swing. None. Guys, I wish you could see that. Wow. I love this club. This club's probably seven years old, eight years old. PRGR. Yeah, probably eight years old. It's a 435 head. Special, special head. Fantastic club. And it's got the <laughs> RT Technology Zeus shaft in it. Greatest shaft ever made. They don't make this weight anymore. They make a lighter one, but it's the greatest shaft. 75 gram. 2.7 degrees torque. Fantastic shaft. Zeus. Z E U W -S, S. If you can get some on the internet, guys, grab them, put it in your driver. You won't believe how good it is. Hey, last shot. Come on, Chase. Give it a twist. Wow. This will be my uh, play driver, this one. Okay, guys, um, that's all. Uh, yeah, just a few things there. Just uh, where I am, I'm very much right on top of my protocol now, and it doesn't change. The pressure down, pressure down. Get it firing really early from the top of the swing. Turn the left hand in it. Try and keep the feet down. Keep it down the trail axis and five o'clock nose. Okay guys, just again, it's reinforcing, reinforcing. Every one of those shots was, was great. And that's what you want when you come out and practice. The worst shot you'll hit is just a little, a little, you know, up and down the face a little bit. A little thinner or something like that, but you don't hit awful shots and you don't hit chunkers. Okay guys, that's just some of the stuff I'm working on.